say in Matthew chapter 20. We were done with uh, Matthew chapter 19. So today we are going to move on to chapter 20. And I believe the Lord will speak to us as he intended to that the first audience will get these words. When Jesus was talking, he had an audience in front of him. He spoke to them in a language that they may understand, that which they are going to understand. He used every example possible to make truth known to them. And I believe and have prayed that the Holy Spirit who was present at that time, facilitating that ministry, who is right here, will accomplish that same goal. So I would want us to do a, a lengthy reading at first with the revised standard version. We finish up with uh, that parable that is in chapter 20. And then we are going to hear or to get some applications from there. I'm reading from RSV. And I read, For the kingdom of heaven is like a householder who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for a denarius a day, he sent them into his vineyard. And going out about the third hour, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And to them he said, you go into the vineyard too, and whatever is right, I will give you. So they went. Going out about the sixth hour, in the ninth hour, he did the same. And about the eleventh hour, he went out and found others standing. And he said to them, why do you stand here idle all day? They said to him, because no one has hired us, he said to them, you go into the vineyard too. And when evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his steward, call the laborers and pay them their wages, beginning with the last up to the first. And when, um, and when those hired about the eleventh hour came, each of them received a denarius. Now when the first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received a denarius. And on receiving it, they grabbed at the householder, saying, These last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us, who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for a denarius? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to these last as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or do you begrudge my generosity? So the last will be first, and the first last. Uh, let's first of all get to that point. I would want to point something here because we are getting into a parable. This is a parable. It is not something that uh, literally happened. But Jesus chose this parable because he wanted to speak something. Why were parables given? A parable is another story, but with a heavenly lesson. So every moment you hear Jesus giving an example, try to understand or try to find out which heavenly lesson is he teaching. And during this time, the people that were used to teach the rabbis, this is one of the methods they used to use. And part of the reasons is this, because unlike us, those days, people had a long, um, they had a long concentration ability than we do today. I would want you to imagine, hardly do I find an example given both in the Old Testament and the New Testament. It is just a few examples where we found someone writing down what was dictated to them. Unlike us today, we have uh, notebooks today and pens because we want to record as much as possible what you hear important. Now imagine Jesus could do the same sermon or discourse as I am doing today. And actually, most of the times there were no planned services like we have now. That on Sunday service we have this 
we have this uh, exposition. In the second service, we have the, the other service. No, during this time, Jesus could just go. He was just moving, and he decided he could decide to stand somewhere. I guess Mama Mahali nanze kuongea. So, nivigumu sana ugempata mtu na karatasi na karamu wa kiadika. And so, every information you find in your Bible, most of it, unlike the letters of Paul and some of the, the letters of the prophets, I mean the, prophet, the prophecies of the prophets, they were not dictated. People used their concentration ability. Most of the people that have written for us the Bible, over 40 others, nearly 90% of them, they could, um, they just spoke or they had or they observed and they wrote. And that is what we have as the indelible word of God today. Very perfect. Those people used to concentrate a lot. They used to, I remember actually in the book of Ezra one day, he stood from morning to evening reading, reading the book of the law. People were standing listening and they got it. And this is another thing I would want to point out that during those times, there were no, the Bible was not um, subdivided into chapters and verses. It was just a scroll. So if today I ask you whether you know anything about Isaiah, you're going to take me to a certain verse. You tell me, yes, I know it's Isaiah chapter 1 verse 3. Come and let us reason together. I know Isaiah 53 uh, about the, the Lamb of God. You can point to me out maybe a text or a context if you try. But during those times, because there were no chapters, there were no verses, if you could ask somebody, do you know of a prophecy about Isaiah? They knew so much about what was written there because they had someone speaking and talking about it. You remember even when Jesus was given the scroll to read during his first day in the synagogue before he ventured into ministry, when he took the scroll he read, then he returned it back. There were no many Bibles. You could just maybe get one or two. So even the many Bibles to read, for pe people to read at their comfort, they, they, were, not, they were not there. People used to concentrate and to listen. The reason why I point out to that is that when Jesus came, he wanted that his message will stick and utterated the way it is, the exact word of God. And so he was concerned on the means of communication. When we were doing history, uh, we, we used to, to learn, we were taught about the, the means of passing information. How was information passed from generation to another? And one of them was verbal communication. That my grandfather could give me a story that the same story I would give to, or my grandfather could give uh, my dad a story, my dad gave me a story, I pass it to my children, and that is how information went. But one disadvantage I remember we learned in Form 1 was that that form of communication altered the message. By the time the message is getting to the last person there, it's a total dif totally different message. These rabbis of the time of Jesus, and around that time, they used parables. Because when you give someone a, a, a story they can relate with, it sticks to the mind. And it is just another story which you relay a heavenly lesson which Jesus knew, another uh, uh, rabbis knew, it will stick to the mind. And so, uh, I want to get back a little bit. We have read chapter 20. I want you to remove chapters. You remove chapters, so we get to the, the verse I have not read. I have started from chapter verse 1. So if you remove the chapters, we are going to go back to chapter 19, and we are going to have a flow. So Jesus never said, when Jesus was talking, for example, Let's go to chapter, let me read for you, chapter 19 from verse 29. Jesus is saying, And everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or children or lands for my name's sake will receive a hundredfold and inherit eternal life. But many that are first will be last. Uh, and the last will be first. So he continued. To the, for the kingdom of God, Heaven is like a householder. So if you remove the chapters and the verses, the continuation of the story in Isaiah chapter 19, where Jesus has said, 
wale wa mwisho watakuwa wa kwanza na wa kwanza watakuwa wa mwisho then after that verse he builds now with the parable so jesus whenever he met an obstacle watu hawaelewi a certain lesson or there is an obstacle for example kuna huyu the rich young ruler in chapter 19 tulifunzwa hapa na yesu akazungumza mambo na wealth akamwambia yule kijana um, akamuuliza what can i do to inherit the kingdom of god Aka, yesu akamwambia okay go and sell everything you have then come and follow me the bible says that young man akaondoka na akaenda akiwa amehuzunika sana because he had many riches then after hearing that na mahali yesu alisema ni vigumu sana watu matajiri kuingia mbinguni it is easier for a camel to go through the of a needle hiyo ikafanya ika wanafunzi sasa nao wakashtuka waka akasema eh hey, basi who can be saved Jesus told them with man it is impossible but with God everything is possible then Peter after that story no they are, they are conversing after that story Peter na akauliza hey na sisi after tumeacha vitu zote tukakufuata what will be our reward sisi tutafaidika tuta na nini and Jesus gives them tells them you will hear it that is now the verse to mesoma chapter 19 like we were taught i'm not going back to i'm, I, I'm building something Jesus told them what they are going to enjoy. They are going to enjoy so much in this world and have eternal life. Na Yesu basi ndio akawaambia those that are first will be last and those that are last will be first. So Jesus is kind of tackling a hard a hard question in the mind of his hearers. And that is why now he comes with a parable. So if the reason seems difficult to the people, Jesus comes up with another story so that to easily uh, explain and for the people to easily understand i hope now we understand because chapter 19 is full of the rewards rewards and uh, the first will be last and uh, the wealth and all that and jesus now comes up with this story so this story will try to answer the many questions in chapter 19 and also will uh, will do something to the people that are hearing it for the first time as jesus is giving it so jesus is telling them about the kingdom of heaven because the rich young ruler asked about what can i do to enter into the kingdom and jesus responded to him in a way that he discredited his testimony and then the disciples asked what again nini and jesus now wants to bring to them to their attention about the matters of the kingdom what matters to god most is the kingdom and how he gives them this story the kingdom of heaven is like a householder so the exact way to mesoma that there were um, of course during that time during uh, during uh, summer it, it was during harvest time and so many people could go to could gather to the uh, to the to the um, to the city gate so that anybody, if you had a lot of work in your house or in your vineyard you could come to hire them the laborers the people that i hear i see so much ni wale watu wa mjengo ukitaka saa hii hata hapa hivi kutaka watu wa mjengo ukiuliza tu ukiulizia hapa utaonyeshwa ni hawa so people used to come out so that if anyone had um, some work to uh, to be helped uh, our saidiwe and now the story goes on like this like we have read jesus is giving of a certain owner of a vineyard who went out to look for people to hire and he met some in the morning that is satatu ya asubuhi alafu there is a word that uh, is very clear it starts in verse 3 The word is and going out about the that hour he saw other standing idle please mark that word idle so and it is Jesus giving it so he ha- he wants to give some emphasis to, to this to this status so he talks he's talking about idleness then about a kind of sasita he met others sasita sartisa and even in the evening and he's t- telling them the same verse six. also the bible says why do you stand here idle all day and then they said no one hired us that word idleness caught my attention we are going to get to go to the lesson maybe of the story but this is another application that i that i found very interesting jesus God is concerned when I when we 
al idol do you remember jesus also talking about an idol word yes he talks about this idleness as something that is not pleasing to the uh, to the heart of god god never created us you know they say the all about wanafanya study they wanasema third of your time one third of your lifetime you spend sleeping one third you spend working one third ile ngine unatumia kufanya vitu zako kama kutembeleana and all that and during uh, in genesis we find our god starting with a working schedule he worked for six days he rested for one day but our our philosophy today is this that god would want you to bless me as in to, to imply that i want to be working less hours and rest many hours that was not the intention of god originally and so jesus is indicating that the people that caught his attention are those that were studying idol i remember i have used these scriptures once in my lifetime or several in my lifetime in a moment i i found myself like i'm idol and i could speak to god with a lot of passion addressing this state because i know god hates it i would want something to do and i could actually point out to god you know you know the strength you have given me and I, i'm not working or i don't have something to do i'm already strong i'm not like those people that are lying in the hospital beds i hate being idle i don't want to be idle and that thing i, I believe it is god who gave it to me i found it very much um okay with the mind of god um and how he has set us to spend our time in this world having a lot of resources does not guarantee anybody to be idle you can use the resources you have to engage yourself in doing something constructive now the heaven the, the other story that we, are, we can see here we are talking about a householder and mo, many people ukioliza who is this householder ama huyu mwenye shaba ni nani watakwambia hadharani lazima yesu anaongea kuhusu mungu then you ask them uh what what is this denarius after kufanya kazi they all received a denarius the same amount of money and some will say this is the salvation kwa sababu those people that got saved uh 2000 years ago those that are getting saved now we all receive salvation equally but now there's something else there's something more because if it is salvation if it be salvation in heaven we shall not work also ephesians says we don't work to earn salvation so this is refutable you cannot say that the denarius the same amount of money was salvation because we don't know jesus could not want to illustrate that for you to be saved you must work we don't get saved by works but when we are saved then we work we are not saved by works but we are saved to work you remember last time when you are doing a, a study here about uh, about deliverance or freedom being set free jesus i mean god said when he was sending moses to go and talk to pharaoh alimwambia let my people go so that they can serve me so god is so much interested after now we have been relieved from the bondage after we've been released from the chains of the enemy for what purpose now because if we were saved for heaven's only it means after mtu akiokoka you should die immediately and go to heaven and meet your maker but god has given us all this chance so that we can work so it the denarius is not bringing out so much about salvation my own uh, assessment is that it means that the rewards that uh, we will receive after we work okay, after that the rewards we will receive in salvation after we work when we are saved with there was another sunday here we were taught about rewards whatever we do for god here bible says in the book of revelation jesus is coming near with the rewards in his hand to reward everyone for whatever they did while they were on the earth 
And so the denarius I find to be the reward that we receive after we serve God. This is after we get saved. So the scripture t says and talks about uh, this employer is not mindful of the little time someone is working. Mradi, you are not idle. And we have heard how he employed people up to the last hour. Sakumi na moja na wanalipwa? Sakumi na mbili. There is something I would want to point out here. After we have said that God hates idleness, either idle words, either staying idle, God hates idleness. I believe we agree on that. And I'm not saying that if you're not employed, you're idle. But you can use this, use this concept to talk to God. I, I hate this many hours. A person in a car idol. And I know I can work. My attitude towards work is positive. This is the point I want to bring home. After he calls them in the evening, because that is where the lesson comes in very well. Ame waita wote jioni. Kasema ebu alipe kila mtu kuligana, kila mtu one denarius. So wakanzisho na wale wali, wale wali kuwa employed sa kumina moja. They received a denarius. And then, going to those that were employed in the morning, he also gave them a denarius. And Jesus is drawing a, an interesting uh, lesson here to us. That is verse 14. Let's start from verse 12. The last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. One of them is making noise. Sisi tulikuja uku asubuhi. And tukachomeka na jua tagu wa subuhi. Bona utulipe pesa the same na wale umewajiri sa kumi na moja. Jesus is reminding them something. When you came to work in the morning, this is what we agreed. We agreed uh, after agreeing, verse 2, after agreeing with the laborers for a denarius a day. So wewe ukijia kufanya kazi, tulisemezana, for example, let's say it's 500 shillings. We agreed, we, I will pay you 500 shillings. So, si umepokea 500, uh, why are you bothered about what the rest receive? And there is something here, very crucial for me and you. And uh, what is your response? What is my response when God is merciful to someone else? When God is very kind to someone else, what is my response? What is your attitude? What is my attitude? That is what Jesus is bringing up. Because if, it, if they are dealing, just see here, the only person who is concerned about two parties or more, one, more than one parties is the owner of the land. Because he has employees who came in the morning, he has employees who came in the Sasita, Sartisa, and evening. He has employees, all those categories of people, and he is concerned about all of them. But the, uh, the laborers, they have got only one person to deal with, the employer. So, wageulizana tu kama hage lipwa. But now that he was paid what they had agreed, what is your problem? And that is a lesson of love. Most of the times, God would want us, even through Paul, to mind our own business. Whatever God has agreed with you, that he remains faithful. Bona wana subuka na hawa wengine. You remember the prodigal son story? Luke chapter 15. Of course, iyo, uyo alikuwa kama amegiri wa kiasi. Because the younger boy, he took everything that belonged to him and went. So everything that was left, was left for the elder brother. And so when the daddy entertains this younger son, na namchijia, lazima namchijia zile vitu, the elder brother was working about. So that's another actual story. But this one, uyu hajafinywa, hakuna pesa wameambiwa, I had agreed with you at denarius, na sasa jumekua wengi, we are going to reduce. No. How do I respond when God is kind to other people? There is a concept I want to introduce here up to this time, and I believe Jesus wanted these people to know because of where they had come from. They, were, they had an, an Old Testament mentality and he's introducing to them the kingdom of God. The concept of justice and the concept of mercy. As much as God is a God of justice, 
He also is a God of mercy. What do I mean about justice? Si walikuwa wamesemezana ukifanya kazi siku nzima I will pay you a denarius. And so the justice of the owner of the land was to give a denarius to the laborer. Isn't it? Tulisemezana nitakulipa 500 jioni na nimekulipa 500 jioni. That is what justice is. We made an agreement and I have fulfilled that agreement. That is what justice is. And justice is binding both to the one who gave the promise and the receiver. Bora ufanye kazi the whole day from morning 6 to 6. They were working from 6 to 6 those days. So have you worked 6 to 6? You have fulfilled your part. I am the land owner. I have authority. I can tell you I will not pay you. But if I am just, I will fulfill my part. So that is what justice is. And this is what was happening in the Old Testament. The Old Testament says, and this is even what Paul has repeated in Galatians, Kama hautafanya sharia, all of it, if you don't fulfill the full law, you are a dark curse. The full law. And so, justice of God was, if you have broken a certain law, you have broken all of it. That was justice. And they knew they knew that system very well. The justice of God. They were used to the justice whereby ukitoa mtu jino moja ilikuwa inasemekana na wewe utolewe hiyo na wewe jino yako. That is justice. Eti ukitoa mtu macho na wewe utolewe jicho. That is justice. Wanasema ukiua mtu na wewe uwawe. That is justice. So they have that mentality in them. But now Jesus is showing them, apart from the law, see you have fulfilled the law. Umefanya kazi from morning to evening. You have fulfilled the law. But something else is in your heart. Something is in your heart. A few verses from here. This is chapter 20. Chapter 15, Jesus says, every evil thing comes from the heart. So you have fulfilled the law. Umetumia akili, umetumia mwili, umefanya kazi the whole day. You have fulfilled the law. Are you righteous with that? Jesus is showing them not yet because your heart is a wicked heart. You remember the rich young ruler? Uyo jama abaya likuwa tajiri. Anauliza Yesu. Nitafanya nini ni igie katika ufalme? Akambiwa go and fulfill the law. Kasema hizo nimefanya tagu nikiwa mtoto. Nimefanya hivi. Sijaua. I don't commit adultery. Do not. Hizo zote akasema amefanya. But Jesus wanted to prove to him. Your heart lacks something else. And that is what I want you to look after. I want you to look after that thing. Yes, I be okay. You have done all that. Fine. Good. Go and sell everything. Give it to the poor. Come and follow me. He left very sad. Why? He had fulfilled the law, but something else remained. These people have worked from six to six. They have fulfilled the law. They have fulfilled what was required of them, but something else remained. Which is that something? The Bible is saying they were grudging. They felt so bad. Kwa ba watu wengine wamepata kufaidika. Na ni kazi yao wamefanya. Hakuna mahali wamehitirafiana na hawa. They have just worked. They have done what they were asked to do. But the ones that came to work first, they had something else in their heart. The bitterness. Why do you feel bad by God being gracious to someone else? That thing of the heart is what Jesus was pointing out to. And after now, they were very much aware of justice. Jesus is showing something else called mercy. Because you don't deserve, kama ulifanya kazi from six, from sasita, from 12 to 6, if you have worked from 5 in the evening, just for one hour, you don't deserve any pay. But I'm going to pay. Why? I am merciful. Justice God is just. Whatever we do, God must pay or repay or bring vengeance. Whatever we do while in the body, God must bring vengeance. God must demand penalty. Justice demands penalty for sin. Have you sinned this morning? Have you thought something bad? That one demands punishment. If God is just, he will not let that go unpunished. That is justice. But so there's something else that goes past that point. So justice in Baka 6, okay. Something else proceeds from 6 going forward. 
That is what is called the mercy of God. We deserve punishment. These people are asking, give me what I deserve. What do you deserve? If we tell God today to give us what we deserve, what do you think we deserve? Death. If I were to receive what I deserve, I could never start here. I could never be studying here. If, I receive, if you received what you deserved, this hall could be empty. But see how gracious God has been. This is what is called the masses of God. So justice demands that God must, dem must demand justice for what you have done. God must demand for that. There is a story I love. And uh, it was given by someone, a certain pastor. And I, it related, I related with it so much. And I'm going to repeat it maybe to those that have never heard it. It is of a certain judge in the U.S. He was a, a judge, and in front of him in a certain day, a certain young man was brought having broken traffic rules. And you know there, traffic rules are critically observed. So, you kijana meletwa, umevuja, ulionekana ume speed, mahali haustahili ku speed. Yule mwenye meka pale, Nibabake, the judge, and the young man, akopale kwa doc. Sasa kijana na smile too, aki yujiuliza, sasa hawa anajua yule ni nani kwangu. Do they know who is that man and they bring me here? And he's just, uh, he's very relaxing, arrogantly. Until when the judge, uh, he looked down and started to write. He said, I've charged that man for, break, for risking the lives of many people. $2,000 or one month in prison. Na akaweka karamu chini. Na akanza kutoka. Na kijana na, what? Ana uzo hapa, hapa hakuna dad. Dad, what are you saying? Hapa hakuna dad. And the, the father just left to his office. And the young man was handcuffed. He didn't have money. Na akapede kwa na hapa kwa sale. When he went there, when the daddy went, akatoa zile guwazake. Then akaitana kwa office. Kaita prosecutor, please bring me the young man. Akakuja. Kamambia, son, so long as I am in that bench, I am a judge. And I should serve justice to all equally. But now when we are out here, you are my son. So I'm going to bring the checkbook. I check here $2,000. The, the, uh, the young man was released. That is how so much I believe our God is. Because God will never abscord justice because of anything. So when I have done something wrong, kama kuna kitu umefanya ata sahi, before God comes to, to think, uh, before he comes to think of why you did it, first of all, it was a sin before him. The Bible says God is so holy even to behold sin. He hates sin. Both in the Old Testament, you, saw, you see there are some false theologians on Asema, the God of the Old Testament is not the God of this New Testament. He's the same God he changes not. So God hates, he hates it when he sees things in our minds, in our thoughts, or when we do it. Only that Jesus brings here a very, very interesting thing. And this is what we should embrace all the more. As much as God is just, he'll give each one whatever he de deserves. But mercy starts from there. So immediately while we were employed from six, the, the first ones, that were employed in uh, the third hour, Satatu. Maybe you can say, you see actually, there is something here. I was reading history. They used to work from six. The wages for this time was six to six. But even the ones that were employed first, what time were they employed? Satatu. So also you don't deserve a denarius. But they forgot. They are only comparing themselves with the rest. They never deserved to be given a day's wage. Because even then, they never went at six. So Jesus is illustrating how the mercy of God will work. Now that we have received the mercy, the Bible says, how, how do you obtain mercy? The Bible says, now, I will give mercy to whomever I will show mercy. Please get this point. God will give justice to everybody. All of us, everyone, they will receive justice. But do you know what? Mercy will not be given to all. The Bible says, I will give mercy to whoever I will have mercy on. That's why the Bible says, Izo, Jacob I loved, before they were born, Izo, 
I hated. Jacob I loved. That is how mercy is. God spoke that to Moses. It is also repeated in the book of Hebrews. Huruma nitahurumia mwenye nitataka. Now you can imagine. Everybody will receive justice for what they did. But mercy will be selective. It is upon the prerogative of God. And we can ask ourselves very fast, though time has gone, how do, or how do we qualify to receive the masses of God? Jesus gave us some examples. And we have done that study another time here. But quickly, I would, re, uh, I would recap that in Seme. Do you know why many people don't receive the masses of God? Na unasikia, justice ni kila mtu atapokea. Justice. Kwa makosa yetu. Lakini masi, selective. One of the things that makes us not receive mercy is because we don't ask for mercy. We feel we deserve. After all, I deserve. How many people have prayed for the masses of God this morning? We just went on to pray for some good other things, which is fine. But not many people pray for the masses of God. But in the scriptures, Jesus is uh, met by some people who feel they are not they are, they, they are not worthy to receive whatever he was to give them. And this is the prayer they made. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. It's a prayer. Number two reason why people, some people will not receive mercy. It is because they don't show mercy. Jesus says, show, to those that shows mercy, they will receive mercy. If I don't give mercy out, I cannot receive mercy. And then, of course, taking the mercies of God for granted. So, Jesus is bringing that. I believe, I will not so much dwell on that story, talking about that. But I, I highlighted about the idleness. This is a verse that you and I can use any moment we find that we are being idle. God hates idleness. He started to work from Genesis. Then, to Kajat corner, the different the people that came at different hours are denoting how the masses of God can go. And then after we, work, after we are saved, we are saved so that we can work. So after you have been saved, what do you do for the kingdom of God? Because the denarius are the rewards we shall receive both here and even in heaven. And uh, Paul talks about the bima seat, the judgment seat of Christ. In ile yesu atafanya nini? Ni ile Yesu ata tuta, tukienda binguni after rapture. He will give to us whatever we, uh, he will give to us the rewards based on what we did when we were here. So whatever you do, whatever you do for the kingdom of God does not go unnoticed. Something else I would want to point out here. Jesus is saying about those people that are fast. If today, without any theological education or any, you know, you don't have so much knowledge of the Bible or whatever, based on a very common knowledge, if you were asked to give a list of those people that you think are fast, like in this church, the, these are the people that are fast. Wale tunaiza tukataja, kutoka pale mwanzo. Si unawajua? They are there. And those that maybe could be, seem to be the last. Especially us, when you tunakuja hapa bele, of course we are fast in the, you know, Jesus is saying about the last, the first being last, and the last being first. I will do it faith free. God help me. But Jesus is encouraging someone who is seated there, who will never step here, who will never be seen here, but you do what God has called you to do faith free. Jesus is pointing out to you here that you who thinks you are last, if we were to categorize you in this church with every honest, honesty, you know, we don't know you so much. We don't know whether you can preach or whatever. And so in our, in our categorizing, we can say you are last. Jesus knew that these people understood, those people that are first, they were being led by their spiritual leaders of the day. But those that will be last will be first. So us, who could be termed as fast? Because we are fast seen, we are seen, we are heard, we are recognized, good for that position. But to that person who thinks and who feels whatever you do is very little, 
or you come to this church and you think sasa mimi naweza fanya nini sihubiri sifanye no do something you can even if it is that prayer that you pray to god and we will never know whether you make that prayer or not we may never know or even that one shilling or two or three or a hundred shillings that you give so that this work may continue and nobody knows your name jesus encourages you we will be there will be a great surprise na ukiona yesu ameirudia that is what you be the last will be first because of that complexity of people thinking that the first people will be first in heaven but jesus gives it an alternative thought that is why he has brought a very long parable so that we may understand that is the working of god so allow me now to move on so the, the verse 15 in asema am i not allowed to do what i choose with what belongs to me that is god asking god is allowed to do whatever he wants with whoever he wants I may never like someone that God has chosen to give a certain gift. Sasa yule anatuibisha pale. Sasa yule anahubiri pale. We may never like those people that have been given those those gifts by God, but you know what? This is what the Bible is asking. Is, is God not allowed to do with whatever he has to whomever he wants? The physical, the spiritual blessings God be allowed because he is God to give to whomever that he wants. The kindness of God is not for the select few. The mercies of God are not for the select few. They are for those that God wants. So the, the scripture says that's verse 17 and as Jesus was going up to Jerusalem he took the 12 disciples aside and on the way he said to them Behold we are going up to Jerusalem and the son of man will be delivered to the chief priests and the scribes and they will condemn him to death and deliver him to the gentiles to be mocked and scourged and crucified and he will be raised on the third day then the mother of the sons of zebedee okay up to there i would want to point out that so you see the disciples are not are now kind of familiar with this statement jesus has given them most of what he knew we will suffice them so that they are going to be steadfast and also pass on that knowledge and the information to the next other people and so he calls them aside in Matthew chapter 16 and chapter 18 Jesus calls them and he tells them about he will be crucified and this message was too difficult for them this is the first time Jesus is giving them very plainly this information and they kind of they understanding it now we understand and now jesus having given them that information now now he has called them aside because he wants them to understand he wants them to keep that information in them behold we are going to jerusalem okay you will be condemned verse 20 then the mother of the sons of zebedee came up to him with his, uh, with her sons and kneeling before him she asked him for something This is what we were talking about worship. Worship must have a physical body response. Whether it is lifting up of hands or kneeling or whatever. This is worship from Genesis to Revelation. Whenever it is being done, there is a physical body posture response. So this mom comes with her two children, two sons, and she knelt before Jesus to ask for something. Which is it? Verse 21. And he said to her, "What do you want?" She said to him, "Command that these two my sons of mine may sit one at your right hand and one at your left in your kingdom." But Jesus answered, "You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I'm to drink?" They said to him, "We are able." He said to them, "You will drink my cup, but to sit at my right hand and at my left is not mine to grant. It is for those for whom it has been prepared by my Father." And when the ten heard of it they were indignant at the two brothers the same lesson continues these two the mother uh, by the way if you have done a study of Luke I think and Mark you are going to hear that uh, the mother okay in one of the in one of the bible versions the sons came to the uh, themselves to ask for this and i'm going to 
maybe if we are able to get to verse 30, I'm going to bring that thing out. Why the Bible may give different uh, versions of story. It is not contradictory, but there's a reason for that. But the mother of uh, these two sons comes, and uh, of course, she's Salome, and she comes kneeling before Jesus, knowing that they were related to Jesus physically, and so she knew that whatever she would ask from Jesus at a, at a fanyua, and she was asking whether the sons who st sit at the, the right and the left, and I was asking myself, see a geoba tu akai pademoja? Where will be the rest seat? You know, wataka wapi ya wengine. Yo ni kujipenda sana. Agesema, si wakae tu pade moja, wakaanisha, lakini wakae karibu na wewe. Sasa nataka wakae pade hii na pade hii, wako hapa. And uh, Jesus said, you don't know what you're asking. Granted, fine. Lakini, watakunyo hile kikobe nitakunyo. Sema ndiyo, sitakunyo. Hey, sawa. Jesus tells them, iyo mesema, mitakunyo. Hakuna shida. And by the way, they were... James was the first one to be killed because of the gospel. And you know what John went through. John alipikwa mbaka na, na, na nyungu ya mafuta. Na muisho ya kapere kwa Patimos Island. They suffered so much. So, um, but there is something else very funny. The ten had it and they were indignant. Just like the, the people who started to work from morning, walipo skiha wengine wanalipo are the same, uh, the Bible says they were they grabbed against the lad owner. These ones are directly grabbing against these two sons. And I believe maybe they were asking. They felt so bad. And Jesus teaches something. Jesus now, after that contradiction, he gives them a lesson. Verse 25. But Jesus called them to him and said, You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, over then, and their great men exercise authority over them. It shall not be so among you, but whoever would be great among you must be your servant, and whoever would be first among you must be your slave. Jesus wants to bring that lesson, and it comes out very well. So, of the two brothers who want to, to stay very close to Jesus in heaven, and of the twelve who are grabbing against them, Jesus talks to them about how the leaders, as whom God has given the leadership capacity. And if you want to be great, the secret or the way of being great is becoming a servant. And uh, I, that word servant is there in verse 26. The commentary was saying it is slave. Slave, if I want to be Great among you, I should be your slave. And these slaves, thank God today we don't have, have slaves around. But slaves were slaves. They used to work in a way and manner which you cannot at all admire. They were mistreated. They didn't have dignity. They had no dignity at all. And so Jesus is saying, if I want to be great among you, I should serve you. I should be looking at what you need if I, I am in a position serves you. And then he's, uh, he's bringing out something that great men exercise authority. They exercise authority over those that are their juniors. But in the kingdom of God it is different. It is very, very different. Uh, so let's go to verse 28. The Bible says, even as the son of man came not to be served but to serve. But to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Unakubuka Yesu in John, when where he washed the disciples' feet, the washing of the disciples' feet was done by the slave of the third degree in the Jewish society. Wayahudi walikuwa na slaves of the in degrees. There was that slave who was most trusted. Do we have examples in the Old Testament? Yes. Abraham had a slave that was very trusted in his family. The slave that he told to go and look for a wife or to his son. There were those slaves that were to serve the masters, pale Jew. But there were slaves in the family also who were to serve food. They were to serve food to the, to the boss. Because there were no means of testing poison those days like we have today, there were those 
trusted slaves who could taste food for the boss because after you mistreat them so much, they feared they could t put in poison to kill the boss. So what they used to do, if the boss wants wine, he orders for wine, there was that slave who could come with a glass of wine and in the presence of the boss, he took the first sip. Then, and when you don't respond in a funny way, the boss takes in. You remember Nehemiah? He was one of them. So, Nehemiah was not in the highest class of slaves. The highest was Kina Joseph in the house of Potiphar. Being entrusted by so much, that slave in Abraham's family, entrusted with so much about the affairs of the family. But Nehemiah was now of the second degree, where he was to serve them. Even food, they had to take some food and eat in front of the king. The, there is another category who are not uh, supposed to serve the master directly. They were supposed, or they, their work was to serve the, the visitors that come in the house. So their work was kukigia wageni. Their work was to take the basin of water and they wash and they knelt down and they washed the, the, the feet. Because of course there were no chairs. Kama hizi tunaka. Watu walikuwa naka chini. So for you to wash, lazima uge, uge kneel down. So wanawaosha migu. Wale? The, 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 the visitors. Do you remember Jesus talking to Simon, one of the people, rich men, who gave Jesus supper? There was that lady who came and started to wash Jesus' feet with her, with her tears and wiping with her hair. Na Yesu waka hita Simon. Simon, waka muuliza maswali, rafu kuna swali ya limuuliza, waka limuambia, wewe hata wakati nilikuja, hauku nipa maji ya kufanya nini, ya kuoga migu. So, this slave that we are, we are hearing about, oh, that Jesus is representing while he was washing the disciples' feet, was not an ordinary slave, was an ordinary of very low degree. And Jesus says, if you want to be great, be a slave. And the slave they are talking about is not one of the high degree. It is of that, that degree. That's why Jesus also took, as an example, he took the towel, he took the basin to give us the very best example of the kind of slaves we should be to each other. Hallelujah. Then, Lastly, I think this will be our first, uh, last rendering. Tasoma, verse 29. And as they went out of Jericho, a great crowd followed him. And behold, two blind men sitting by the roadside, when they heard that Jesus was passing by, cried out, Have mercy on us, O son of David. The crowd rebuked them, telling them to be silent. But they cried out the more, Lord, have mercy on us, son of David. And Jesus stopped and called them, saying, What do you want me to do for you? They said to him, Lord, let our eyes be opened. And Jesus, in pity, touched their eyes, and immediately they received their sight and followed him. I really, really desired to get to this point because I love what happened here. I want us to see a duplicate. There is a duplicate of what happened in the story we are reading in the parables with what has happened here. Uh, not in the parable, sorry. In the, in the story of the mother of the sons of Zebedee. The Bible says she knelt down and she said this. This is, what she, this is a prayer. This is a prayer like the ones we made, we make here. She said this. Then the mother of Zebedee came out to him with her sons and kneeling before him, she asked him for something. Nataka kukuliza jabo buwana. Nataka kukuoba jabo. Then, that's an abstract prayer. You are not specific. Let's go to those blind men. They said, they, they, they said, Oh, have mercy on us. Have mercy on us, verse 31. Son of David. Jesus stopped and called them, saying, What do you want me to do for you? Ebu, see here, please. They have asked for mercy. The question is, have they received mercy? Have they received mercy? This is the reason why I said mercy is very funny. Because by the virtue of Jesus getting attention about them, that is what mercy is. He could have gone assuming them. So we don't see somewhere that Jesus is saying, okay, you want mercy? Hey, come, come, come for mercy. Okay, Peter, do we have mercy? No. 
that act of Jesus getting your attention. And you are poor, you are wretched, you are blind, you are a sinner, you are a murderer, you are whoever. That if Jesus you get your concern, for him to get your that attention, that is what mercy is. Because he could have chosen to pass by. So they received mercy, yes. That's why Jesus now is asking them, what do you want me to do for you? After you have received mercy, please get this. After you have received mercy, then state to Jesus specifically what you want. So most of the times, especially to Kifanya Makosa, and we are very guilty about the sin we have done. We cry, we cry, we cry for two hours. You cry because you are very guilty of what you did. And Jesus is there. He has heard, yes, mercy, nimekuhurumia. But what do you want? Say, I need forgiveness and I need the peace of heart. Period. Hallelujah. Yes. You having, Jesus have mercy on me. Okay, fine. Now tell me what you want. So you know what? The mother of the sons of Zebedee, like, I want to ask you something. Uh-huh. Jesus gets attentive. What do you want? Tell me what you want. So, you know, we say like, let's pray for Trinity House. Oh, Father, I pray for Trinity House. What are those maudomega na maotugi? Be specific. Be specific. Please, go now past that. Jesus is listening to you. I pray for the pastor. If only you, oh God, you have used him. Yes, Jesus knows he has been using him. Father, he has been serving you. Yes, Jesus knows that. But now, what do you want God to do to him? So, to namalizanga maobi, na yesu akopare badu anaskiza tutamuoba nini. Na wetu nasema amen, tunenda nyumbani. Jesus discourages this abstract prayer. Be specific. So, the two sons, the, the two blind men, there's something else I said I would want to say. You see, I think Luke and Mark, they talk of one blind person, but Matthew is giving two. Is there any contradictory in the scriptures? There is, is no. I remember here one time we were taught about why the Bible was written and it appears the same way. We have four people giving the, the life history of Jesus. Why not one? If one person was chosen to give or to share the life history of Jesus, it could be enough. But God found good to give us for. Now, the reason why we ha- Luke and maybe Mark are talking about one and Matthew is talking about two, Matthew is writing to the Jews. And in the Jews, in their laws, there is this law that says every evidence must have more than one witness. Maybe that's what I thought. Because Luke never recorded of two. Luke was so much into what was to come after. But Matthew is appealing to the Jews because the Jews could have asked, now that he was, you are telling us he was healed, one of them, how do you know he was healed? Matthew tells them, actually they were two. So even if that one gives you a long t- witness, we have another one. And um, they had mercy. They cried to Jesus. They were staying Living, uh, they, they were sitting by the roadside. I want to say something here. In those very few verses, I think two or three, the blind Bartimaeus and his colleague were healed. Who was the first person to see physically? It was Jesus. Because he called them, he touched them, and their eyes were opened. I was hearing of another lady who has been blind. I don't know whether she's still alive. But she has composed more than 80,000 songs. She's an American. She's a lady who was born blind. And a certain other person criticized her. Like, now that you, are, you have served God this much, why, why are you blind? Even if I was given a chance, I could not want to, be, to see up to this time. Why? I want that when my eyes will be opened, the first person that I will behold is my master. That is when she gets to heaven. Now, there's something here. In those very few verses, we see something, a great change to the lives of two people who cried to Jesus. And Jesus is having a multitude following them, him, who have not believed in Jesus. Meaning, the two people that were blind physically, they were spiritually seeing. 
You remember when we talked about uh, spiritual blindness here? These people knew about Jesus. They had believed in Jesus and they knew what Jesus can do. That is not a spiritual blind person. That is a person who is able to see. But the people that are silencing them that have not yet believed in Jesus, they are just following Jesus to see him do miracles. Many of them were spiritually blind. But the ones that were physically blind, they could spiritually see. That's why they knew Jesus was coming. How did they know Jesus has that power? Most likely, because of where they were staying in the, by the roadside, they heard people talk about Jesus. They received that report, they believed in it. Who is the other person who heard about God and they believed? Rahab. In Joshua chapter 2. Rahab the prostitute. He, she heard about the God of Israelites. She believed in that God. And so when the spies came, Rahab told them, I have heard of your God. That's why she was able to rescue those people. They were not killed. But Myers and the friend had heard about Jesus, even having never seen him physically. They believed in him. They believed in his power. And more so, they believed he was the son of David. That was a very great acknowledgement in the Jewish society. How can you call this man, because he was not believed to be Jesus, Unamuitaji, the son of David, and they knew the only person who will carry that title was the Messiah. And many of them never believed Messiah has come. So these people are giving Jesus the highest title of the expected king of kings who will come in the reign of David. And they knew him. So they are calling him specifically Jesus, son of David. Another lady who came to Jesus with a daughter who was sick, she also addressed Jesus in that title, Jesus, son of David. It is acknowledging his kingship. But Myers, they were blind physically, but they were very, very much spiritually aware and alert. And Jesus healed them. And now they could see both spiritually and physically. I don't want to proceed from there. And uh, I request that if you are here, Specifically, I'm going to go to these people who are blind. You could be seeing physically, especially those that are not so saved. Maybe you are here or you are listening to us online. And uh, you have never met Jesus. It means you are spiritually blind. You have been coming to, to us so that we can work together here. And you do good to join us, but you are spiritually blind. Jesus would want to heal you by setting you free from that blindness, by saving you and delivering you from your sin. So I request that we may pray together and that person that I'm addressing, if they may be here, it will be good for them to come in front. So I request that all of us, please, we may stand kindly in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's not get tired of doing what God has called us to do. If you say that in the house of God, you don't know something, what you can do, please find something you can do. Ask the leaders of what you can do. There will be a reward for that. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you for allowing us that moment to hear. And uh, these words that were spoken very long ago, but they have come live to us because the Holy Spirit witnessed them, who gave them, who shared them during that time, is the same, same one that we have here. And we appreciate you. And we ask that none of us will get tired of serving you. For your reward is in your hands. Be glorified and exalted forevermore. Even as we set to enter into the other service, may your blessings continue following us up. Overwhelm us with your joy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Tunashukuru Mungu. Kama uko pale na unapanga kutoka saa hii, tafadhali